हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इंडिया लाइव स्टूडियो 2019 आई एम डॉक्टर सदान शेट्टी फ्रॉम मुंबई आई एम एमेरिटस प्रोफेसर प्रैक्टिसिंग इन मुंबई फॉर लास्ट 35 फाइव ईयर्स एंड आई हैड द प्रिविलेज ऑफ सीइंग द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ इंटरवेंशन कार्डियोलॉजी राइट फ्रॉम द इवोल्यूशन फ्रॉम द टाइम द इंटरवेंशन स्टार्टेड एंड टू द करेंट स्टेटस ऑफ सो मच you know the complex interventions and so on with me i have dr bernard cortesi from milano italy italy and it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome him to the studio and during the next 15 minutes i am going to interview dr bernardo and take his valuable opinion on the role of few important aspects in intervention cardiology when i discuss dr bernardo there are three areas of his interest in intervention cardiology like use of oct imaging in interventions then the role of drug eluting balloon in interventions and so also use of brs in intervention let me ask the first question dr bernardo how imaging guided intervention in particular oct has uh, change our total approach to the intervention like in a chronic cases as well as in acute coronary artery disease so let us discuss first in a chronic patient who comes to our lab where you are going to advise oct and how you are going to improve upon your result by using this imaging technique thank you for the presentation uh, sadan i have to tell you that uh, oct is a promise right now We have very good data with the, with this imaging technique however still it is really underused um I've just done one presentation on, OC on OCT showing that uh, it will help you in better understanding the lesion characteristics in terms of calcifications fibro fatty uh, plaques and uh, it will also help you in better assess the stent it will help you in deciding what stent you want to use and if you have implanted it well so uh, it will be impossible to use oct in any uh, pci even in the future in my opinion but in some specific cases uh, in some complex pci it is uh, a very valuable tool that will help you in uh, treating better your patients uh, you said the chronic cases uh, calcific lesions calcific lesions and complex bifurcations are a good candidates in my opinion for the OCT and uh, we have studied it quite a lot also for left main for distal left main i have presented uh, recently the rock 1 and the rock 2 studies which show the feasibility and the efficacy of this technique in order to reduce the late lumen loss and the, the clinical and hard clinical endpoints as well in the rock 2 study so i think that uh, in in a chronic situation complex lesion you should use oct complex you mean left main bifurcation such cases and calcific you, lesions and calcific lesion yeah how you put this in vis-a-vis ivs you think you know like oct may be because of the better imaging uh, reason it may score over ivs how do you put ivs versus oct i think that oct should replace ivs in something like 80 to maybe 90% of oh, the I cases okay. because the quality of the image is superior for example in case you have a dissection distally to a stent just implanted you can see it easily with your ct and not so much with the ivus you can see the correct apposition and expansion of the stent more easily with the oct than with the with the ivus so i think that uh, it is uh, it is a, a real advancement over ivus or the ivs yeah. what about the injection of contrast with uh, uh, in case of uh, oct like patient is you know lv dysfunction or a patient has you know renal dysfunction any way what we are injecting because i was told in even the dextran you know little diluted and then that can also give a good image so that you can use in high risk subset you know over for say they get into a acute kidney injury following you know using uh, contrast when you are using oct you you have any particular 
sort of are you always injured the contrast? Yes, you have to adopt some tips and tricks in order to reduce the risk of mm. acute kidney injury. For example, dextran is uh, one possibility that, mm. in my opinion, should be better studied mm. before suggesting its use overall replacing the contrast. But if you are an experienced OCT operator, uh, you can use a low contrast dye. You can, it's, it increases of about 20 to 30 millimeters yeah, per yeah, procedure. Yeah. But if you are doing a complex procedure, the help that OCT is giving you uh, allows you to reduce the number of shots with the angiogram. Mm -hmm. So in a complex procedure, it will not mm -hmm. increase uh, significantly the use of contrast. So the net benefit, you know, by the amount of contrast what you're using for angiogram is a little bit less after using OCT than the IVAS. So like even if you have to use during procedure contrast, but because you know you get a better clear, clear delimination of the artery, the dye, the number of shoots you will minimize, isn't it? Unlike the IVAS. So that way it is better you are saying. Yes, if yeah, you are yeah, experienced yeah. you can yeah. just take two shots, two one shots. before the procedure yeah. and one at the end. But the, what about the how much uh, time duration it takes in addition to the say procedure time, you know? And the cost factor in your place, you know, like in India at least we have always, you know, the cost is a major issue yeah. that, you know, we, uh, we have a little limitation. How do you find in your Milano, Italy this um, procedure, you know, like uh, particularly the, the cost angle wise? You know? Well, uh, I think that intravascular imaging overall is uh, not so much used uh, even in Western countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a rate of intravascular imaging in Italy uh, between 5 to 10 percent. And in my opinion, you should use one of the two techniques depending on your expertise mm -hmm. in uh, at least uh, uh, 30 to 35 percent. This, this, that, that would be the optimal rate of use of intravascular imaging, in my opinion. Um, the main reason because you, why you are not using OCT so much is probably related to the cost. Yeah because you may add something like 1,000 euros to, to a PCI uh, where you have used one or two or three DES, a drug or a balloon, uh, whatever. So uh, you, we cannot use it uh, as we would like to. We don't have a specific reimbursement in a, in a, in a lot of uh, European countries. I've just been told that in Switzerland they have a dedicated reimbursement and they use OCT more. So I think that the cost issue is the most important one in reducing the rate of OCT uh, use. Um, uh, the, the, the length of the procedure is not really affected by the OCT mm -hmm. because uh, once you have put the, the probe distally to the lesion, the pullback lasts 2.5 to 3 seconds and that's it. So it's not a problem. This extra knowledge you have to get from either IVAS or the OCT. Say, we don't have that imaging. Say, if I have to use that knowledge, you know, from your experience of using OCT, I was in a complex lesion. Anything you can give simple tips, for example, like, you know, we say pot, you know, yeah, give a good high pressure, like a proximal optimization like that, you know, like in the very beginning, you know, like the post and dilatation, we should not, we were not doing that much as against now with the knowledge of this, you know, uh, newer gadgets. Do you give anything specific points like I don't have IVAS and I don't have a OCT. At the same time I want to do the complex procedure you know like say maybe bailout when I'm doing a procedure and you know, it's a complex and it's a bailout situation I need to know at least quickly. So any information what you gather can it be applied without doing it you know like maybe say you Say, very, for example, you are doing left main to LED stenting. CERC is otherwise not disease. But whether to open the strut going through the CERC and keeping it little in a good case, giving a low pressure, you know, like a, a maybe about 7, 8 with a non compliant balloon, something like a, you know, like a not a very high pressure, mm. just to keep the strut away, something. Something like this knowledge, anything you, or you need all the time procedure. Without using it, without using it. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Applying the knowledge, you know, like you have no expert in that and you have used that knowledge and now how you have become wiser without say using at times, you know. Uh, this is the reason why uh, they were created uh, some specific groups 
yeah. in Europe, for example, yeah. the EBC, EBC European yeah. Bifurcation yeah, yeah. Club. Um, uh, they they published they published a lot of papers, Paper. uh, very technical papers, showing you how you should do a bifurcation PCI without the guidance yeah. of intravascular yeah. imaging. Yeah. So, for example, they suggest to use a pot. Yeah. in uh, any type of bifurcation exactly. and uh, this is a good point but from the other point of view if you use uh, um, if you use OCT or IVUS you may assess the correct stent position exactly. and expansion so you may avoid to do a pot and uh, uh, doing a pot is associated to an increase in the cost because you have to open a dedicated balloon and in the length of the procedure and you may also have some complications in a few cases. So in, also in so this case, intravascular exact, imaging will help yeah, you in simplifying exact, yeah, the PCI. Yeah, simplifying plus the exact correct uh, this thing. You yeah. know? So just over dilating may not be true in all the patient. That's what I say. And the what other point that you said, uh, just to assess uh, how is the side branch. So you may avoid to dilate it uh, if mm. you have seen with intravascular yeah, imaging yeah, that yeah. it is wide open. You may avoid to dilate it and so you may avoid also to dissect it yeah. and, and the need for a further stenting. And you, you now, young, young, in fact, in our country is very common, you know, in the sense about nearly 15 to 20 percent of our patients having acute uh, myocardial infarction, heart attack and uh, less than 40 years, you know. Okay. So, some of my friends have started doing OCT or maybe I was in the acute setting because basically acute infarct is due to either plug erosion, plug rupture or a calcified nodule. So their experience is that this OCT imaging and I was guided procedure gives them clear cut. Is it a plug rupture? Then maybe needing a stent. Erosion, we may not do stenting. So calcified nodule, of course, you know, depending upon we may have to this. So this erosion and plug rupture, you know, so do you have experience of using OCT in acute MI, you know? Yes. Um, there are, in my opinion, four items for the young acute MI patient. Yeah. There are plug erosion, plug rupture, uh -huh. calcified uh -huh. nodule, and SCAD, SCAD spontaneous yeah. dissection. Spontaneous code, yeah. So I think that uh, you have seen yeah, a yeah, lot of them in, in yeah. young, yeah, yeah. young people, yeah. mostly, mostly women. Um, I think and in these cases, uh, OCT is really helpful because we have seen several times that uh, um, with the plaque erosion we may decide not to stent it and to follow it up maybe with another angel a few days uh, later and it's quite the same for SCAD for spontaneous dissection we had one case two weeks yeah, ago in yeah. our cath lab we decided not to stent it because the patient had a very long dissection so we uh, keep we kept the patient in the ICU and we reobserved after three yeah, days yeah, yeah. and then the, the angel was totally different. Clear, yeah. we, we didn't have a, a, a long dissection, but just a small one, and we fixed it with a stent. So you would adv advise or advocate because with the current uh, understanding of our subject, like many years ago, we may not be knowing much about you know the uh, pathophysiology. Now we know in more detail, and by imaging, definitely you can uh, uh, put exact you know erosion, scad calcified nodule, plug rupture, so that you can accordingly treat. That's what your recommendation is important, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. But I see, you know, many like many times when we interact with many international experts, like maybe in US, maybe penetration is just 10 to 15 percent, you know, or maybe a little less than that also. There are some of the experts yes, who say that, you know, I don't do, you know, but this is the way I do, you know, yeah. Maybe even Europe, you know, some of the like uh, Swiss uh, experts and all. They say, this is the way I do over the time, so I don't keep imaging like FFR in his experience is not, is it, is it right or we should go with the knowledge of using it? Um, knowledge is important. Yeah. Um, uh, we always suggest to use the modality that you prefer. Mm. If you are expert on IVUS, go on with IVUS. Yeah. And uh, while you are constructing your reputation and yeah. your knowledge with the OCT, uh, in our cath lab, we use intravascular imaging in around 40% of the cases, uh, mostly OCT. So I think that the experience is really Gaining important. Yeah. Yeah. The other area, Bernardo, in our Indian setting, as I mentioned, young heart attack is common in our country. Like I said, 15 to 20% of our patients less than 40 years. So also we have got diffuse or you know small arteries, or maybe we may do the stent, maybe 2.5 or maybe 3 millimeter patient comes back with the same thing. 
now what next we have like you know we have a limited experience of you know using drug eluting balloon or so you know yeah and we know that any anything small stent no point you putting in again in already stented case so you have got you know your interest also of drug eluting balloon or chasing the small vessel disease you know yeah how how you what are the tips you want to give to the you know people who are watching our um, comment commentary you know Yes, this will be the thematic of one of my presentations tomorrow. The use of stent, either stent or drug or balloon for small vessel disease. And I have quite clear ideas um, regarding the use of drug or balloon as a first line therapy in this case. For many reasons, and I can tell you that among these reasons is that now we have clinical data, uh, at least with some drug or balloons. Um, the other reason is that you can you, you can have restenosis also with drug or balloon, but it is much easily uh, retreatable uh, with a stent in a second time. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, and if you have a long stent in a long vessel and you have a restenosis there, it is not always easy because you have a processes there that uh, you cannot remove. So, in my opinion, small vessel disease, the first treatment option should be drug or balloon. And um, yesterday I had a chance of doing some cases in the Ruby Hospital in, uh, in Pune. Um, and I have been told that uh, the use of drug or balloons in, uh, in India is, is very low. Yeah, it's, 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 it's growing, actually. Yeah, it's but growing, uh, at the same time, cost is another issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a cost There's is an, a issue, cost but is an issue, but if you yeah, don't yeah. recut the patient, yeah, yeah. you don't have recurrences. Any particular drug, now paclitaxel or your cerulamus, which would drug you? Drug eluting balloon if prefer, you know, like uh, now we have got available to cerulamus. Lemus uh, drug eluting balloon is better or anything like that? Well, we don't mm. have a direct comparison. Mm. We yeah. started using Paclitaxel, Paclitaxel in 2007 mm. and uh, we still use Paclitaxel. But now since 2016 we have Cirolimus and I am the PI of all of the studies, major studies with Cirolimus called oh. the balloon. Oh. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, improvement in terms of deliverability if compared to the other drug called the balloons. Um, we will be running the Transform 1 study that I will present tomorrow. No, this evening, um, which will compare, it will be the first comparison in a small vessel disease setting between uh, uh, a paclitaxel coated balloon and cerulimus coated balloon. So, okay. in uh, I think 1.5 years, I can tell you okay. which will be the, the best one. But we, we use both of them. Any particular technique uh, you want, like, you know, you should not be giving too high pressure the drug eluting balloon because just yesterday only one of my friends was saying he had to really give a very high pressure, you know. Does that uh, make any difference in the delivery of the drug that, you know, or a nominal pressure or any technical uh, point in the DEB? It depends on, on the balloon that you are using. Okay. Um, for example, there are some um, Paclita Secota balloon that uh, are um, semi-compliant balloons okay. or the, the Cirolimus coated balloon is a non-compliant no, balloon. MC balloon. So in, it also depends if you want to treat an instant restenosis. So in this case you have the cage yeah. of the stent. You may uh, want to go higher with the pressure and uh, uh, if you have a small vessel disease you may want to have some dissection that is uh, helping in delivering the drug to the media okay. and later to the adventitia. So uh, you don't want to create, however, a big dissection, a large dissection that uh, you should fix uh, with a stent. So um, uh, some tips and tricks could be to uh, inflate the balloon slowly, two, four, six, eight atmospheres, mm. uh, and then 10, because in, uh, you want to adapt it uh, yeah. to the vessel yeah. wall and also you should, you should try to deflate it slowly, slowly yeah. in order not to have it uh, some part but of the vessel wall But if you've got a long stent and so you have to use a long balloon, it's only one inflation only or you're going to do multiple uh, inflation? Well, with the same balloon you should you use just, uh, just once. Only once. Yeah. 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 With, with so a magic should, touch yeah. you have still some this, drug yeah, on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have seen so from preclinical data. Once you inflate and then, then the drug all goes away? 80%. It 80% goes away. Yeah, 80%. So it should gone. match the length of the stent and all, isn't it? Or maybe only area where there is a instant stenosis there you are going to address. Well, we use uh, long the, balloons actually. Long balloons. Yeah, long yeah. balloons. And if you oh. use, for example, a 0 0.8 ratio to the vessel wall, you may use longer balloons. You have balloons up to 40 millimeters. Uh, if you want, if you do a one-to-one -one ratio to the vessel size, you may decide to use shorter balloons and not to go too high. 
The other point, you know, one more area where I want your opinion, because with the hype of BRS in our, at least in our country, you know, that initial enthusiasm and a lot of our colleagues and, you know, we started using like right and left, you know, yeah. Though there are, you know, clear cut way how you have to deliver that. It is not like any other stent or like, you know, vascular scaffolding has its own method of this. But with the now, you know, internationally it has been banned and all. How do you find is the future? You think again it will come up again since you have interest in BRS also? Yes, yes. We did a lot of studies on um, BRS, uh, specifically with Absorb, also showing good data, good data with the correct technique of implantation, yeah. which requires time, you know. Uh, we still have a, a good data, a three-year follow-up. However, you know, everybody knows what happened to the BRS concept after uh, Abbott retrieved uh, uh, Absorb from the market. Uh, there were still uh, a few small companies working on it, but with the new uh, uh, latest release, European guidelines, uh, uh, it, it, it is becoming difficult to, to do research and to apply clinically these, uh, these devices that remained in the market because you know it, they are uh, now a class 3 indication yeah. outside of clinical trials. And so to do a clinical trials requires a lot of money and these small companies without the support of the big ones have many difficulties in going on. So uh, I am now somewhat more pessimistic on the future of this, te of this technology, not because of the, of the technology, because I like it. Uh, I still have a lot of patients treated with BRS. They are happy and have any processes in their coronary arteries. However, the environment is not going very well. Thank you, Bernardo. I, I must confess, you know, you are very lucid, uh, clear, you know, the thought on these three aspects of your uh, clinical interest, OCT, DEB, and the BRS. And I would like to thank you once again for joining us in this thank India you. Live 2019 studio. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah.